Hello everybody, my name is David Gully at Bentley University and this is the third, or excuse me, the fourth of four videos uh, on the reserves market. So in our first three videos we looked at how the Fed uh, used to uh, affect the federal funds rate through the reserves market and in the most recent video, video three, we looked at the introduction of the IOR and ONRP rates and then in this video we're going to look at how the IOR and ONRP rates uh, can be used to change the federal funds rate. And for other videos, uh, please see our YouTube channel. So, during the Great Recession, the Fed used three rounds of quantitative easing, which we have addressed in other videos. Uh, and what they were trying to do was increase aggregate demand in the economy. Now, when they went through their three rounds of QE programs, uh, they dramatically shifted the supply of reserves curve very, very far to the right. And this would have caused the federal funds rate to be pushed down to zero or possibly even below. And in our previous video, our third video, we looked at how the Fed introduced the IOR and ONRP rate um, to prevent this problem. So, now this brings us to a new problem. Well, at some point, the economy, uh, once it's improved, the Fed would want to start to raise the federal funds rate um, and unwind some of its extraordinary measures in terms of its balance sheet and, and so forth. And so in the old days, if the Fed wanted to raise the federal funds rate, as we addressed in a previous video, they would have simply used open market operations, in other words, sales of Treasury securities, to shift the supply of, of reserves curve back to the left, and that would push up the federal funds rate through standard supply and demand actions. However, as we'll see in a second here, since uh, QE1, QE2, and QE3, that strategy isn't going to work out quite as well as we would hope so. And so here's the problem. The three QE programs shifted the supply of reserves curve very, very, very far to the right. So the supply of reserves in the banking system increased very dramatically. And what this has done is this has pushed the supply curve far to the right onto the horizontal component of the demand curve. So under normal circumstances, in the days of old, if the Fed wanted to pursue open market operations to try to increase the federal funds rate, what they would have to do is they'd have to undo some of those quantitative easing programs and sell potentially billions of dollars, maybe hundreds of billions of dollars worth of securities to move the supply curve until it got back to some place on the downward sloping portion of the demand curve so that the federal funds rate would start to rise. Because the intuition here is that reserves are so plentiful that in order to, under ordinary circumstances, to get the federal funds rate to rise, the Fed would have to dramatically reduce the supply. And that is where our problem lies. And the idea is that the volume of open market operations that the Fed would have to undertake would be so massive that financial markets simply couldn't deal with it. And so because of that, it's really not a practical or a feasible way to try to increase the federal funds rate anymore. So we need something new. Well, as we discussed in the previous video, the Fed introduced the IOR, the interest on reserves, and the ONRRP rates, the overnight reverse repurchase agreements. And as we'll see, these two new facilities, these two new interest rates, can help the federal funds rate uh, change in a way that's different than it used to. And so starting in December 2015, uh, the Fed wanted to increase the federal funds rate. It felt the economy was strong enough to be able to maintain that increase. And they wanted to increase it from their initial range of zero to a quarter percent to a quarter to a half a percent. And so what they did is they decided to increase the interest on reserves rate from a quarter to a half a percent. And then they introduced full use of the ONRRP facility. They had been experimenting with it on a small scale previously. So they, in effect, rolled it out to the world at large. And they uh, instituted an initial one quarter percent interest rate on this. So they had half a percent on interest on reserves and a quarter percent on the ONRRP rate. And what this did is it caused a really sort of interesting thing to happen with the uh, uh, demand curve. And so over here, I've structured it so that the supply curve has been shifted very far to the right on the horizontal part of the demand curve. And notice there's now two components to the demand curve. There's the interest on reserve component, IOR. And so in December 2015, the Fed raised that to 0.5%. And then they introduced the ONRP rate, and they set that at a quarter percent. And so here's ONRRP. And if you look right here, 
effectively what this says is there's a range between which the federal funds rate will be. So it should be on the downside no lower than a quarter percent and no higher than a half a percent. And so the question is, well, did it work like the Fed wanted it to? And the answer is yes, it did. It worked actually quite well. And the idea is this. If the Fed offers these two overnight risk-free rates, what will happen is that other short-term interest rates on commercial paper and, and CDs and so forth will have to, to have to migrate roughly to that range in order for those institutions that issue those securities to compete with the Fed. Now, even though it's stays in the range that the Fed has set, uh, there is more variation now in the federal funds rate than there used to be pre-2008. And so here's a chart here from the Fred graph. The solid red line uh, is the interest rate on reserves. And so you can see that that went from a quarter percent up to a half a percent. And the solid blue line is the federal funds rate. And you can see that as soon as the Fed increase the interest on reserve rate to a half a percent and also increase the ONRP rate to a quarter percent that the federal funds rate because it's a short-term interest rate as well also increased to right almost in the center of that range and you can see here that these other fluctuations here these are effectively end of month uh, balance sheet maneuvers that banks and other institutions are undertaking and so you see some normal fluctuations in the Fed funds rate but these are not important from a policy point of view what is important is that the federal funds rate uh, was drawn into the range of the IOR and ONRRP rate, which is exactly what the Fed wanted. And so the idea here is this. The Fed is still using the federal funds rate as its uh, go-to policy tool, except now they're changing it in a way completely differently than they used to. Back before 2008, they would change it by using open market operations. Now they're changing it by changing the IOR and ONRRP rates uh, in order to change the target range of the federal funds rate. Thank you very much.